let's take a look at how the Sony FS5 stacks up to the Sony FX6 in exposure latitude. So both cameras were shooting at the same time. Both had the Sony FE 24-105 lens and I tried to set them up as closely as possible. The FS5 was shooting in HD because that's the best internal codec, the 10-bit one. FX6 was shooting in UHD and also the FS5 was a XAVC-L and FX6 is XAVC-I. So significant difference in quality in the codec certainly. I think what you'll see with these images is that an overexposure, the FS5 holds up pretty well. So this is base exposure or what Sony's recommended exposure levels are, which in the FS5 really was kind of being underexposed because you wanted to overexpose to clean the image up. In the FX6, I'd say is plenty clean. One stop over, things are looking good. So these images show the log image, then the LUT applied. And then as I go over or under the corrective LUT, Alistair's LUTs feature offsets to bring the image back to normal exposure. So plus one over with the exposure offset LUT looks good. It's two stops over, things still look totally fine in both images. Obviously, if you're viewing it with a regular LUT, it's going to look overexposed and it is compared to normal levels, but you bring it back relatively easily with the exposure offset LUT things still look great in my view with both cameras. In these cases too, I was just applying the LUT over the log image for the second set of images. So this is just the normal LUT applied. When I corrected further with the offset exposure LUT, I also did a white balance on the images, just an auto white balance in DaVinci Resolve to make the images match a little more. And in my view, the images out of these cameras look about as close as you're going to want to get with minimal work. I mean, I'm sure I could get them closer with more work, but minimal work, just basic auto white balance and resolve and uh, a lot and they look pretty good. Four stops over, we're about at the limit of where you can push these cameras and you'll see the FS5 is already really breaking apart in my forehead in the background. FX6 still has a little room. You could maybe go 4.5 stops over if you really wanted to push it, but I don't know that it would be a good idea. So here's a close up. Again, this is HD in the FS5, so I have to zoom in more 400%, 200% here. And you can see everything falling apart in the FS5, FX6 holding together okay. Now let's look at underexposure. One stop under in the FS5 is already a dangerous game. FS5 does not like to be underexposed in log footage. You really want to overexpose for the cleanest image. FX6, much more forgiving. So two stops under, normal LUT, and it looks pretty dark, obviously. But when we bring it up with the correct LUT, and there's some noise, certainly, in the darkest areas, but nothing that wouldn't clean up easily. Three stops under, and the FS5 is going to start really losing some color information, for example. This is where an external recorder will help a little bit with the FS5. You'll see that internal codec, if you look at the sort of shadowed area of my face, uh, it really starts to fall apart. FX6, in my view, still looks totally fine and usable. A little bit noisy, certainly, but I think nothing you couldn't fix if needed. Four stops under, very dark. Brought back with a LUT and a correction. Alistair's LUTs only go to three stops over and under, so this also had a little exposure correction. FS5 is really trash in the dark areas. FX6 still looks okay, and obviously it's not gonna get much better for the FS5 with five stops under. FX6 doesn't look amazing, but certainly a more usable image in a pinch than the FS5. FS5, we'll see some close-ups, 200%, and you can see it's really a mess of noise. FX6 still looks decent, and five stops under, even worse, of course, but again, the FX6 is a salvageable image if needed. So that's it. This gives you a sense of what you can do with the FS5 and FX6, how far you can push them, as well as how well they match up.